Namaste and welcome to this exciting episode of Sathology Debunking Mythology. Sathology means science of truth or study of truth. Opposite of that is mythology, which is our mythology, which is science of study of fake lie or imagination. I really request everyone who is on a spiritual path to don't call your native histories, Hindu history, or other cultures, indigenous history as mythology, as Europeans would like you to call it. Don't use the word mythology. And, and we have proved in many of our videos that most of the European narrations of world history are in fact mythology. So, so without delay, let's continue. I have a very, very special guest today. You would love to hear what he says. And it's the first time he's coming on the channel because of my friend Medanand. And uh, and this guest who is coming on the show is a Nath Rishi follower, Trika Guru. He's a filmmaker, director, media journalist, and PhD in Indology and Communication and the president of Rishi Kul Foundation and many things, many more things. This is just a brief introduction and these some things which have been summarized to me. So without delay, let us welcome Sri Gurunath Moksha. Namaste. 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 Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram. And it's a real honor to host you today. And uh, very grateful for coming on the show. And uh, I would like to know that uh, before we begin, you mentioned Baramula. Yes. And you said Varhamul. Yes, yes. I just spoke about Varaha in the last show. And so please explain like these names, Baramula and Varahamul. How did you find it and what do you, where did you get the reference? Uh, I'm uh, also happy to share with you that uh, on December 5th, which was the Kal Bhairav Jayanti, we have uh, inaugurated an international center for Trika, uh, which is also called Kashmir Shaivism in Srinagar, in Kashmir. So my association with Kashmir, apart from the uh, Trika Darshana as a teacher, as a student of Trika, is also the fact that uh, it, you know, beckoned me to travel, look at the holy, sacred places around Kashmir. So if you look at uh, the Kashmir Valley, you will see uh, that there is a small opening towards the northwest and uh, through that flows the river Vitasta or Jhelum as it called uh, in modern days. And uh, the story is that this entire Kashmir valley was submerged underwater and uh, Rishi Kashyapa who under you know uh, whose name Kashmir is named Kashyapa Meru which is called Kashmir. Now. He requested uh, Varaha Swami the wild board incarnation of Vishnu to clear the waters so he could propagate life and not just human life, all life. So uh, Varaha Swami, Vishnu as Varaha, the wild board, goes underwater and moves through his mula. Mula means the molar. The, the word molar teeth comes from the word mula. So from his molars, as you know, the wild board, you know, the molars are protruding out. It pushes the a very huge big stone and the waters are cleared and we see the waters of the Kashmir Valley, which was earlier called Sati Sar, now flowing as the river Jhelum or Vitastain uh, Vedic uh, you know, parlance. And you'll be surprised that this place was called Varaha Mool because it is Varaha Swami's molars which moved the earth. And over a period of time, Islamic uh, influence, now it's called Baramula. So a lot of people think that there is Baramula. But actually, it is Barahamul, which has got broken into Baramula. I'm, I'm also happy to share with you another very less known uh, you know, aspect about this place. There is a huge rock called Kani Merge. Uh, Kani means stone. Merge in Kashiri in Kashmiri means uh, mother. So she's called the mother stone. She's the first stone of this universe, according to 
uh, our legends in Kashmir. So that that particular rock which was moved, and if you have an aerial view of you know Kashmir Valley, you will see actually that the mountain has been cleared from inside. You can actually see it. We've got some. I will be happy to share a satellite image with you where you can see. And you can also see that a huge rock is lying on the right side of River Latista, in which Please. every year, uh, your voice uh, is not audible to me. Every year before the exodus in 1991, uh, the Kashmiri Hindus would do an annual pilgrimage to the Kani Maj, the mother rock. Amazing, amazing. I mean, this is remarkable. Like, that's what I tell people. There is so much wisdom in the Indian sages. Bharatiya sadhu mein itna gyan hai ki hum log pashtim ki taraf kyo dekhte hain bar bar. Yahan ke log to waha ja rahe hain. You know, all the Americans want to go to India to do some spiritual practices. And uh, Indians try to listen to Jordan Peterson as a gadho ko sunte rehte hain. You know, like these people are there which are very shallow, very, very shallow. Tell me one thing. You mentioned about Kashmir Shaivism. And before that, you told me you were a Ram Das, and then yeah. you became Shiv Bhakta, and uh, so so this transition. And also for audience, I can tell you there is a uh, Bharat Yatra, uh, which is do, they are doing is starting from Sri Lanka, and following the Kundali of Bharat Varsh, going north. And you know we have Sushumna Nadi, we have uh, Ida Pingala. Three Nadi Vihar. So tell us, like the film with the whole Kundalini, the chakras, which uh, wow. I've written a book, Transcending the Mind, the entire uh, Yoga Sutra I have translated into English language. So, therefore, I'm pretty much aware of Patanjali. So, Unone, uh, they explained very well. And actually, any everybody should read my translations or any other book. If you want to follow Sanatan Dharma, Yoga Sutra has everything in it picks up from a person from a mere novice to the top. Ishwar Pranidhan. Anyway, please, you tell me that Kashmir Shaivism, Ramadas to Kashmir Shaivism, what is the yatra, what you had, and how people can join you? Oh, fantastic. Uh, I've asked a few questions with you. और आप मुझे बताइए हिंदी में कंफर्टेबल है आपके Whatever, I am comfortable in both languages. I speak uh, nine, but I can comfortable both the languages. We'll try and mix both. Thoda Hindi yes, or thoda... Hindi. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Trika, jo naam se darshan hai, wo aapko pata hoga, Advait darshan ka ek super, uh, what do you call, consciousness wale system ko Trika darshan ke. So, everybody is aware, you know, people who come from the uh, Vedic background, they are aware of the Vedanta Darshanas. Vedanta Darshana again uh, has at least five different accepted Darshanas and everybody knows what Darshana means uh, and uh, Yoga is one of them uh, but not in the Vedanta. Uh, so uh, the six Astika Darshanas in which Vedanta is there, Vedanta again under it has uh, Advaita, Vishishta Advaita, Dvaita, 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 Dvaita. Dvaita. So, these five. So, jo advaiti hai, jo advait ko saad lete hai, people who are able to achieve advait and reach the consciousness stage of Aham Brahmas. What do they do? Okay, now I have become Brahma. Then kya mar jai? What do you do? <laughs> then the trika flows into them automatically. So, uh, bringing a, a small, you know, a story of my own past, my childhood, I was born to an Advaiti father belonging to the Shringeri Shankara tradition and a Dvaiti mother belonging to the Madhva Tattvavada tradition or the Vaishnava tradition. So, at home, there were small fights that my guru greatest, my darshana is better than yours. And it, you know, a chota sa, teencha saal ka bachcha, used to wonder why the parents are fighting over uh, gurus. So, I got into 
spirituality and adhyatma at a very young age and of course later on i also understood ki it is my uh, the karma from my past janmas and at the age of 16 i, I ran away to the himalayas in search of a guru found a guru who just gave me one small mantra and said you know just go chant this uh, you know mantra chanting many people might think uh, is mindless it should be because the meaning of mantra itself is manana trayate that which takes transcends the mind as as your book says you know so uh, and that prepares you for further yoga or further practices and during my journey in spirituality i met uh, a very learned very senior varkari uh, sampradaya guru varkari sampradaya are also nathas i was not given a guru name or a chela name at that point of time uh, i was still going with my the name that my parents had given me and uh, this guru uh, shri datta ji as he is called uh, he told me just keep chanting the rama mantra and uh, which i did and till such time that it became what is called as ajapa japa ajapa japa is when you don't have to actively chant it uh, you know it it became second nature every breath was rama even uh, the nadis went rama 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 jai jai ram krishna hari jai uh, jai ram krishna so it was natural to so uh, it, it is so natural to fall in love with the word itself called rama yes and at that time uh, the whole idea was to you know just be his dasa ki uske das ban jaye ram ji ke das and uh, ram das ke naam se phir likhne lagi i started writing uh, some of my published works are still in the name of shri ram dasa and uh, a little later the uh, just so that uh, your audience will also know how sanatana hindu dharma works if you go to a temple uh, the idol is placed in what is called as a garbhagriha right so everybody must question what is this garbhagriha kiska garb hai garb you know means womb whose womb the answer to that question is your own womb you go to a temple whether it is a shiva krishna rama anybody and do you look at the deity who attracts you it is one manifesting as many right it is the one paratatva manifesting as shiva shakti you know we have so many names for the same tatva so you take the qualities of the deity that attracts you take those qualities put it here in your own garbha put it in your own womb every human needs to approach the temple the deity as a female you know just like a human female will take a very small uh, drop from a male and create life and and that that the life that comes out of her is independent of both the parents similarly when you take the gunas when you take all the qualities of the deity who is attracting you and put it in your womb over a period of time the qualities grow inside of you and you give birth to yourself these kind of people are called dvijas or the twice born of course you can do that through kundalini kriya yoga where you actively raise the kundalini towards your sahasrara where your kundalini shakti meets her shiva and they you know impregnate this body and then you deliver yourself spiritually from the sahasrara chakra and then you are reborn spiritually and become a dvija so this is one of or the two of the techniques that were and are very prevalent in the sanatana dharma now uh, i when uh, i started looking at uh, rama i imbibed his qualities let me tell you it is very very difficult to be rama you can become a god very easily you can become a demon very easily but being human is the toughest of them all and uh, once the sadhana of the qualities of rama got acquired or the sadhana got over you know intrinsically the deity that was rama's ishta or rama used to pray to 
which is Shiva himself, you know, this whole process lifted me and put me into the Shiva Arad. Now, again, uh, uh, in the Nata Darshana or the Nata tradition, there are 15 different stages through which a human reaches the Shiva Tattva and then comes down. So there is ascendance and descendance. Uh, the whole Trika system is based on that. There are seven different uh, levels of consciousness through which you move up and down. And uh, Trika, by its name, means three. Trika, you know, the trinity. So what Trika teaches you is that once you start iterating your consciousness, see, we all have different identities, you know, just like, uh, you know, you were introducing me with several connotations, but these are things that I do. This is not who I am. So there is an amness and there is doing, right? Uh, the amness is same for you, for me, for every one of our viewers here. So if you look at the amness, Trika Darshana iterated it down and said there must be three things. One is the knower, which is you. Second is that which is known, right? Third is the knowledge. So you need to have these three minimum to have life. That is why it is called Trika. The known, the knower and the knowledge. Shiva, Shakti and the Jiva. That is how Trika uh, spread itself through Kashmir to various places. And of course, it has reached us in South India. As you know, I'm sitting in Bangalore talking to you now about Trika also. Uh, so in Trika, whether you call the Paratattva by the name of Rama or Vishnu or uh, Shakti or Surya or Ganapati or Skanda, the Paratattva remains the same. And it is the Paratattva which is knowing itself through you. So it is not that you are searching for Shiva, that you are searching for the truth. It is Shiva who is searching for himself through you and, and this knowledge. So this is uh, basically a very brief about what Trika is. Now, uh, your next question was about uh, Bharatya. Is, is it, has it been a long uh, monologue? You can actually interject me anytime you want. No, no, no. It was a very good one. And also, I, you gave very good information about the 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 Maharashtra, that Sampradaya, uh, Varkari Sampradaya is part of Nath Sampradaya. I didn't know that. And I... Oh, and uh, Tukaram, San Tukaram is the one who started it. And Jai Jai Ram Krishna Hari, Jai Jai Ram Krishna Hari, very common mantra is there. Please continue your second part. Uh, so the Nathas, uh, if you look at uh, what the word Natha means, it just means somebody who has understood himself, right? So any person who understands, you know, in the beginning of, or before the beginning of this podcast, we were talking about, uh, you know, something and you said, uh, Jagannath Sicha, if Jagannath wants. So even Jagannatha, the word Nath there, means that the person who is, you know, the knower of the Jagat or Ranganath, or we have so many Nas, Pashupati Nath. It basically means somebody who has understood himself or knows himself uh, or she knows uh, herself. So the Nata Sampradha, if you look at uh, where they have been, you'll be surprised that actively we find monasteries and ashrams uh, starting from Upaganistan, which is Afghanistan, all the way east to Laos and uh, the the yoga, the Kundalini yoga of the Natha Rishis and the Natha Gurus went into Tibet, went into China, which went into Japan. And we see, you know, the Chen, the Dhyana, which became Chen, which became Zen in uh, Japan also is an offshoot of the Natha meditation techniques or the Natha Yoga. And uh, from north, we have active ashrams in Tibet down to Sri Lanka. Of course, uh, with your own research worldwide, we might be able to discover more Natha centers. Uh, the core of Natha is what we call as the Agama tradition. Uh, when we talk about Vedas, Vedas are called Nigamas. So 
let me tell you the di- basic difference between ni- nigamas and agamas see when you are of a lower consciousness and you are looking at uh, a higher consciousness let's call it god for a lack of word when you are just a jiva and you are looking at a vishvatma or when you are looking at the paramatma you are looking at something more subtler or more higher than you then naturally the sadaka will start singing praises isn't it that is very natural because it is beyond your understanding so when you sing praises of something higher than you a consciousness which is higher than you these are called the nigamas so the entire way you know veda drashtara the mantra drashtara who is looking at the universe as a higher entity than himself or herself creates the nigama or the vedic system agama means coming down no agama gama means movement agama is coming down coming down from either the paratattva as shiva which are called shaivagamas or coming down as the paratattva vishnu this is pantra pancharatra agama or vaikhanasa agama so there are agamas which come from a higher entity to lower consciousness so there are two methods of understanding life and truth one is the vedic system and once the vedic system is kind of assimilated and digested and uh, you know in, uh, institutionalized or internalized completely the sadaka then automatically goes into the agama system and it has been our endeavor to teach both to our kids in the gurukul so that they understand the nigama and the agama so the natha tradition has primarily dealt with the agamas as the main source in that uh, all agamas uh, geographically some say they have started from uh, you know amarnath some say harmuk which are both in uh, kashmir some say kailash wherever it was shiva is talking to parvati and all the agamas are spoken in the language of love look at this it is shiva talking to his lover and shakti who is the jaganmata she knows everything but for the benefit of you and me she is asking asking questions what is truth what is reality what is life what is death how do i reach there so an entire system of yoga and lifestyle starts from these agamas now the story goes that when all this was being uh, transferred you know in love language we call it sandhya bhasha the difference between nigama and agama is nigama anybody can understand but agamas need to be taught through a guru because they will mislead you if you read it just you know verbatim they are all very tiny sutras for example the second sutra of uh, shiva sutras is gnanam bandha which means if you have more knowledge then it the knowledge will bind you to life so how do you liberate yourself from both knowledge and moksha which is life itself the circle of life and death of course we will need to spend uh, an hour or more to understand this small sutra so uh, let's coming back to this so the agamas were heard by nandi it they were also heard by a fish of course a fish was then you know cursed to go into manava loka onto the bhumi और वही फिर मच्छेन्द्रनाथ बनते हैं जो नवनाथ के जनक अब नंदी भी बीच बीच में आ जाते हैं अवतार लेके भूमि पे जैसे बसवन्ना है कर्नाटक में और यहाँ पे लकुलिशा काला मुका पाशुपता बहुत सारे शैविक ट्रेडिशंस इन्हीं आगमों से बनते हैं नंदी द्वारा लेकिन जो ओरिजिनल रेसिपियंट है हु इज दी ओरिजिनल रेसिपियंट ऑफ दी आगमास दी ओरिजिनल रेसिपियंट ऑफ दी आगमास इज शक्ति हर्ष्या तो शक्ति के भी नाथ बने हैं नवनाथ भी बने हैं और नंदी जी के जो फॉलोअर्स हैं उनके भी नाथ बने हैं सो देर आर थ्री बेसिक नाथ संप्रदाय ऑफकोर्स आई बिलोंग टू दी संप्रदाय क्वालिटी नाथ ऋषिज वी आर नॉट एसेटिक्स हम लोग सन्यासी नहीं है वी कीप द शक्ति इन आर ओन कॉन्सर्ट और द वाइफ इट बिकम्स आर शक्ति and the shiva in you merges with the physical shakti who is there on this bhumi on this dharti 
So, uh, and of course, all the gurus, Rama, Lakshmana, even surprisingly, Vibhishana and Ravana are gurus of Trika lineage. Adi Shankaracharya is a guru in Trika lineage. Of course, the most important and the most famous guru of them all, Apnevi Sunahoga, is Mahamaheshwar Acharya Abhinav Gupti. He is considered to be the greatest Nata that ever existed. And uh, we are following in his footsteps and teaching our children and whoever is interested, uh, the Shastras as deciphered and disseminated by Abhinav Gupti. So, since we are talking about Kashmir Saivism and Tantra, let me tell you that this year there was a beautiful, uh, what do you say, happenstance or beautiful Adesh that was carried out. And you will be very happy to know this. And I am sure of all the podcasters I have spoken to, you will love this. Uh, you know, and I want to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. So, we will make it a little interactive. Abhi, aap itne sare podcast karte hain, and you also told me that you have found so many uh, holy places around the world. Bharat ek punya bhumi hai, hai na? Right. Correct. Hai. And uh, aise hi uh, Palestine bhi manta hai, aise hi Israel bhi manta hai, Juda bhi manta hai, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia bhi manta hai, African countries bhi manta hai. They all, uh, you know, the Mayan civilization also believe that their land was holy. But what have you ever thought what makes the Bharata Varsha different when when we say ye hamari punya bhumi hai, ye hamari holy land hai, have you ever thought what really makes it that different? Actually, it's a very good question. Actually, my pichle lagta rose reverse ho gaya. Maharaj is going to question. <laughs> I like this podcast now. So this one is uh, so. Uh, Jambudweep mein 9 varsh hai. There are 9 varsh in Jambudweep. And Bhagavad Puran mein Shukdev Goswami informs Parishet that even Devata want to take birth here. And also when so, uh, and, uh, and many other Puran and many other places also the same thing is mentioned. And uh, it is the only land on this Bhumi, Devi, Earth, planet Earth, where karma are burnt. No other land karma are burnt. People accumulate and spend. But it doesn't happen that karma is only here. It means that the south of Himalaya, because it is on the south of Himalaya, Himvant, then the Thari, then the Ilavart, then the Rambyak, then the east of the Bharadwash, then the Parvat, then the Ketumal, so nine years are there. But in this land, only the karmas are burnt. And that's why everybody wants to take birth here. So the population is more than here. ये ये तो ये तो आपने तुष्टि कर दी कि ये पवित्र भूमि है पवित्र भूमि क्यों है जो बाकी किसी के पास नहीं जो यहां पे है सी यू डॉक्टर बारामूला से शुरू किया था ना वरामूल कुरुक्षेत्र नाउ ऑल दीस प्लेसेस एवरी सिंगल देवता कम से हर गंगा भी है यमुना भी है एंड uh, uh, देवता मेनी ऑफ द प्रितु महाराज का जन्म भी कुरुक्षेत्र में हुआ पेहोवा and Varade, at least five Vishnu avatar have appeared here. Or Bhagwan Shiv Ji ki to Pavan Bhumi bhi hai. But you tell me what you have in your mind. Yaha pe kiwa? Yaha pe kiwa aare? America mein kiwa nahi aare? America mein to UFO utar rahe ki sir. Or hurricane bhi aate hai wapay. Hurricane bhi aate hai. Hurricane bhi aate hai. The uh, answer to this is, it becomes very obvious when I say it, ki yaha pe ma shakti ke avshesh milte hai. You know, Shakti, the mother energy of this universe has fallen or her pieces have scattered themselves across this holy land of Bharat. Active energy centers, which we call Shakti Peet. The seat of power lies scattered all over the subcontinent. Now, this year, surprisingly, uh, what happened and uh, we were fortunate to have been beckoned and ordered by Mata uh, Sharada, is that, as many of you might be aware of, the Sharada Peet, which is one of the Shakti Peets, has gone uh, into the Paki uh, Pakistan-occupied territory. It's in the POK region. 
तो इस साल क्या हुआ मार्च ट्वेंटी सेकेंड को जब हम युगादि मनाते हैं द बिगिनिंग ऑफ अ न्यू युगा युगादि उस दिन एक शारदा माता का मंदिर भारत के अंदर हमने स्थापना किया जस्ट अ स्टोन थ्रो अवे फ्रॉम द बॉर्डर ऑफ पीओके सो द ग्रिड लाइन ऑफ भारत एज आई वॉज टेलिंग यू भारत इज अ ग्रिड लाइन ऑफ एनर्जी पॉइंट्स एंड एनर्जी सेंटर्स सो द ग्रिड लाइन ऑफ भारत गॉट यू नो अ स्मॉल शिफ्ट इन हर फैब्रिक and because of this shift we see a ripple effect jaise wave hota hai na you throw a stone into a lake then a wave a small wave is created so this year when sharada mata came into the bhumi of bharata the ripple effect was that she gave an adesh to us she ordered us to awaken the kundalini of the entire network of shakti kendras of the shakti peethas so all the energy 108 bolo or 54 bolo ya 18 whatever number of shakti peethas that you uh, want to believe in or agree the bharata subcontinent has a sushumna nadi which was clearly shown uh, we will share the uh, photographs with you and like you said the ida and pingala the male and the female nadis and what is surprising is the entire ramayana also takes place within this sushumna nadi this is uh, the sushumna nadi lies between 78 degrees east longitude to 83 degrees east longitude and if you uh, look at where uh, the sushumna nadi lies you will also realize it is in the same meridian in which the alabad uh, you know mean time or the time of india is calculated you know we have a standard indian time which is calculated in the same now if you look at the uh, map just like that you will right now you will find it probably a little towards the east but you have to imagine the akhanda bharat a se to himalaya like you were saying the aryavarta the brahmavartas or you know the subcontinent vartas if you look at the whole uh, a se to himalaya and i'm sure you know about this uh, in uh, i think raghuvamsha it is kalidasa explains how himalaya has spread his arms embracing the mother bharata and if you look at an aerial view you will actually see that himalaya has spread his hands and embraces this holy land of bharata now in this uh, sushumna nadi also lie the seven chakras starting from the muladhara chakra in the shankari shakti peet in uh, sri lanka to the sahasrara chakra which lies in the kailash mansarovar there is no temple there but that is where the sahasrara chakra is in our own tradition there is no difference between uh, shiva and vishnu there are portfolios of the paratatva five portfolios or five things that it has srishti sthiti laya the you know tirodhana and uh, kripa so when it comes to destruction it is who we call as shiva and when it comes to sustenance it is vishnu we know that right now every vishnu avatara is considered to be a bhairava born to maintain the sustenance in on this earth shiva himself is taking birth as a bhairava and rama of course is one of the uh, classic bhairavas and if you look at uh, the uh you know the sahasrara where shiva resides as himself he drops down a little you know flows through the sushumna at just below the agnya chakra is ayodhya physically where he takes birth as a bhairava from there he goes into the vanavas and stays in chitrakoot for 12 years which is the vishuddhi chakra of bharata from where the vanis of the rishis the ghoshas the mantras of, of the vedas the wisdom of the agamas and the silence of the universe can be heard chitrakoot the vishuddhi chakra if you go down below dantewada which is the heart of bharata is situated right in the center of the dandakaranya dandakaranya you know is the a uh, very uh, what do you call dense forest of course indian 
Bharatiya heart will beat in jungles only. And if you ask yourself that question, even as a Vaishnava, why did Lord Vishnu himself go on Vanavasa? Why did he go and live in a forest? The answer is to protect the Rishikula, protect the original Vanavasis. And what have the British done? The British talk as if the forests were infested with, uh, you know, dakus and thieves and aboriginals. Aisa nahi tha. The original inhabitants of the forest are the rishis. No, according to our shows, we have done a lot of shows on Britain. The women wear hats over there because the men used to poop from the balconies. That's the whole culture. <laughs> so British yeah. culture is a joke. You know, they, till 19th century, they were begging money. They became rich because of India. And that's how the America was found on American money, Indian money. I want to ask you one question. When he, when it comes to Mahabharat period, and you know, I also study uh, and uh, with due respects to you, because gurus like you teach Yagya Valka in his Surya Siddhanta. And Yagya Valka, we all know, he was a disciple of Pailarishi, but he studied under Vaishampayan. Uh, he marks the prime meridian of India, passing from Rotak and Ujjain, straight line going to 0, zero at Lanka. And because the today's Sri Lanka is known as Simhala Dweep in Vedas and Ramayana, it's not known as Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is named in 72 because they wanted to attract Indian tourists. And it goes all the way to Meru Parvat. So the the prime meridian, like the the which is according to Surya Siddhanta, is is the meridian which has been considered by all our rishis and sages from time immemorial. That's why you have all the Tirtha available on those places. Ujjain, Rotak, all these places are Tirtha locations. So when you say the, uh, and Kailash, you will be shocked to know, it passes right through the Kailash also. Meru Parvat line passes through the Kailash, little bit towards the west, slightly west, but passes between Badrinath and Kailash. That line passes straight over there. Now, this is the geographical information on 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 the uh, on the the prime meridian according to our calculation and uh, the secondly the 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 there are, there are around 108 shakti peet according to bhagavati devi bhagavat purana out of which 51 are in india 57 are outside of today's bharat varsh and uh, and some of them are in pakistan one of them is in pakistan also today and one of them is in Afghanistan also because when Vishnu uh, was, when Shivji was taking his body all over the earth to purify it, he, he, it went all over the Prithvi, every continent. So there are many of them are hidden also nowadays, which you correctly mentioned, Nath places hidden other places also. So with this information, Yagya Valka and Sushumna Nadi, which is the main Nadi, according to Patanjali, and, uh, and the cross-sectional point, so, Muladhar is where? Muladhar, you said Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka in uh, Shankari Shakti Peet. Shankari Shakti uh, I'm sure you've heard. Yeah, Shankari Shakti Peet uh, is included uh, in even in the 18 uh, Mahashakti Peethas. So, it, is, it makes itself uh, into the list of all the lists that there is. Now, uh, Zero Meridian, uh, which is Ujjain, like you said, uh, is... Ideal for astronomical reasons. Correct. True. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, that is about 72 degrees east. I don't have a map here, but I'm just guessing that it's about 72, 72.5. Is that right? Uh, and uh, you... Yeah. So, uh, uh, according to me, because I've also been a student of Yagnya Valkya, and um, I'll be happy to share that uh, I found his, uh, you know, Mool Ashram in Bihar also. Uh, I'll, I'll share these things with you later. So anyways, uh, coming back to this, uh, this is an Adesh or this is, a, you know, a mantra or a drashta that was shown to me by uh, Mata Sharada, Mata Sharika in uh, Kashmir. And I will tell you why this becomes the Sushumna Nai. Because you, like I, like I was saying, uh, the whole Ramayana happened. And if you, if you are looking at the Ujjain Meridian, you will find that the whole Mahabharata was happening. Right? We will come to this. Uh, and, uh, but the reason why we are 
you know doing this uh, or we are undertaking this adesh is also because during ramayana rama allowed or you know just uh, allowed is the right word sita mata to go underground to jo shakti bahar aayi thi हम जैसे मैंने आपको बताया कि शिव और विष्णु में हमारे संप्रदाय में तो कोई फर्क नहीं है वैसे ही सती और शक्ति में भी कोई फर्क नहीं तो आप सती जो शक्ति जो सती बन के भारत के भूमि पे हर जगह पे बिखरी हुई है वो अंदर से भूमि से निकल के आ रही है सीता बन के इफ यू लुक एट द स्टोरी ऑफ सीता शी इज कमिंग आउट ऑफ द ग्राउंड एंड वेर डी गो बैक इन द ग्राउंड नाउ रेजिंग द कुंडलिनी ऑफ भारत माता also means raising the sita out so that bharat mata